but we will be speaking to David Haig, who is an international human rights lawyer, to get his perspective too. David, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I think we should put that question that you were just about to pose to Christopher Hope there. David, thank you very much for your time. Is this new treaty, is it a landmark treaty? Is it enough to get around all of those legal issues that have held up this policy so far? Hi, good, good afternoon to you both. I mean, I, the, the short answer is no. I mean, I don't know whether to, to laugh or cry when I see James Cleverly um, and, and yet more promises and, and, and no action. Um, I mean, this is nothing is going to happen in the next 12 months. Um, you know, the, all that's happened now, we'll see that the, the detail is that they've entered into a treaty, which is one of the things that the Supreme Court said needed to be done to, to make this policy um, legal, as it were, with our current, our, our current laws. Now, this obviously, when, when he comes back to the, the UK, this still has to go through domestic legislation. So it still has to go through Parliament. It obviously still has to pass the House of Lords. And then it will end up in court battles as well. So... Bearing in mind it took a year from the High Court on the Rwanda policy to say it was OK, the Supreme Court to say no, a year and a half for it to go through that process altogether, nothing's going to happen anytime soon. But, David, we are also expecting this emergency legislation. So it is a two-pronged approach as far as uh, we've heard from the government so far. Could that change uh, the course for, for government? I, I don't think so. I mean, even if you listen to what James Cleverly and the government are saying, they're saying that they're not expecting any any um, changes until spring next year in any event. Mm. So, and that's by their own timetable. And then when we look also, you know, what we, I think one thing that the government has shown that they, we, we can't trust is things they say on immigration. David Cameron, Lord Cameron, who's back in the government now, back, you know, when he was prime minister, was saying that he would bring immigration down to tens of thousands. Yesterday, we saw hundreds of thousands. Um, and so it, it really, you, you can't trust a word they say. And there simply isn't the time. It's too little, it's too late, it, nothing will change in the next 12 months. Isn't perhaps the um, instructive thing here that now we've got the treaty, we'll get this emergency legislation, perhaps a vote in the House of Commons next week, then it has to go to the House of Lords, where the Conservative Party only hold one third of the seats in that House. If it's the House of Lords that then stop the legislation in its tracks, that then kibosh the government's plans, from a political rather than a legal perspective, is it then that the Conservative Prime Minister can say, look, I'm doing all I can to get this uh, off the ground, but the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Lords are stopping me with their combined uh, votes in the Lords, does he then take it to the country? Well, I think, I think, I think Tommy hit the nail on the head, I think, and I've, I've said all along, one of the things that I think they're trying to do is weaponise immigration effectively and, and migrants coming across on the channel and the Rwanda plan um, uh, to basically win votes. And if that fails, they can blame someone. So causing problems, causing fights, they can be seen as the so-called immigration heroes that will fix it, yet there's no actual heroics as far as I can see. And so, you know, blaming the Lords if it doesn't go through, blaming the European courts, blaming yeah. everyone but the people that have been in power for 13 years. Well, all right, David. You clearly aren't impressed by this particular policy and you believe the legal obstacles are too great for it to, you know, ever come to pass. So what's the solution then? Because we can't keep having thousands of uh, migrants crossing the channel every year. I mean, I think that there's, there's lots of things that need to be done. Now, you know, there's no reason why a foreign country cannot be safe for us to send asylum seekers to. And I'm not against that. What they should have done in the first place is done their homework on the Rwanda policy, made sure by elements like this treaty or whatever needs to be done, as the Supreme Court said, was done on day one, not years and tens of millions of pounds down the line. Similarly, get a good system in place so that when people come over, we deal with them effectively, so that they're not people on the asylum, waiting for asylum decisions here for years, costing the British take taxpayer millions and millions and millions. It doesn't take three, four a decades to look at someone's asylum um, application. So sort that problem out protect the borders more than we are, have better relationships with our neighbouring countries. There are many things that we can do. We also need to look at 
legal immigration as well, legal immigration in a better in a better way. I mean, I'm sure we've all gone out of the country through airports. How many times has anyone checked any one of our passports? So we don't even know who's here and who's not. You go to other countries, you have checks when people come in and out. So there's so many practical things that they can do that for whatever reason, they're not doing them, but they just can't seem David, to get it. What, what do you mean so, with the passport? Sorry, David, what do you mean with the passports? We, we obviously get our passports well, checked. Only when you come in. Right. Only when okay. You come in. So you're saying that we. we so if we... you're an overstayer, if you're an overstayer, Emily. So for instance, a student overstayer, or you're a work permit overstayer, or you're not meant to be here, or you're someone that's come here illegally. We don't know if you've gone out of the country. Right. Okay. Yes. Not good when you're trying to manage no. the borders. And it is interesting that so many other countries do this. I suppose it would mean that it's sort of uh, more hassle at airports. I wonder if that's the reason we don't do it. But uh, David, on your list of I other things, I think a lot of people can live with that if it means that we have some control. <laughs> On your list of other things, David, perhaps the government would say they are doing this. They've signed deal after deal with France. We now have joint oversight of patrols on French beaches, facilities being built with British money uh, in northern France, and indeed these uh, new uh, operations in Turkey, mm. finding out these supply chains of the criminal gangs. Uh, perhaps the government would say all of this litany of different things that you suggest, they're doing. But, Tom, they've had 13 years, and so far no one's gone to Rwanda. There's a, a, a few people on a barge that cost a ridiculous amounts of money that's still stuck in, in legal battles. So these are the, you know, it's not a new government, and it's not for them to kind of blame all the previous Home Secretaries. We've had three Home Secretaries in the space of the space of a year. Mm -hmm. So they've had 13 years. There, there, there comes a time when I think we need to say enough is enough, and, and we need a change of government. To be fair to the government on that point, the small boats as an issue, of course, illegal migration has been, you know, as old as time, but the small boats has been quite a recent issue. Mm, since sort of 2018. Yeah, 2018. That, that, that we saw this sort of new wave, and, and other European countries are seeing a, a wave of migration. The, James Cleverly would say, and did say in the House of Commons two weeks ago when he became Home Secretary, illegal crossings to the UK down by a third. In the average European country, illegal immigrants to those countries have been up by a third in the last year. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, they are they are saying some of the right things, you know, and I uh, you know, we'll give them credit when they have said the right things. But it's not about saying things. It's actually what we really want is what I want to see, you know, from a from a from a perspective as a Brit, but also as a human rights lawyer. I want to see our borders properly protected. I want to see genuine asylum seekers that need our help being able to come in the country and not being villainized um, and, and then obviously the fake asylum seekers and those people that profit from that being 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 dealt with and being brought to brought, brought to justice in the yeah. case of the people smugglers that really isn't happening as much as it should be because this is a government that's doing this you know this is this is our government i just don't think they're doing a very good job and in any event i mean i you know i don't see anyone going to mm. rwanda anytime soon well, there you go. David Hay, international human rights lawyer. Thank you very much for your perspective. Really appreciate it.